Natalie's time to do something. So if you want to take this under tray off, it's a T30 Torx, and there's, I think, a million and one of these bolts all the way up along the front here. Shout out to McMaster for being probably the best hardware supplier in the Chicagoland area. Literally, you need anything, including a million bags after buying anything from them. They, uh, they definitely come through with their stuff. Some basic maintenance, regardless of how your engine is, if it's running, not running, whatever. There's this under tray under the under tray. And uh, what it seems like this is really good for is capturing every single leaf possible on the road, including glass, metal particles, whatever it might be from the highway. Yeah, you can see the leaves. But I wanted to show how you would take this off. And so we have two Phillips rivets, but not just that. You have four T30 Torx screws, plastic screws, and they hold them in. And then when you think you're done, you're not because it's also wedged between the condenser and the radiator. So once you get all the hardware out, you're gonna come in here. So I'll come closer so you can see. Just put your finger in here. So fan, radiator, and kind of there's this opening and just pry. And there's these, uh, snap clips there. I think they just grip the radiator and then you pull it off. Why is this like this? On the passenger side, we have the connector for the electric fan. And then we have a sensor here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it's, uh, it has like a push clip that goes into the under tray here. So get one of these trim removal tools. Let's pop that out. After that, they should just come right out, exposing all the leaves that your vehicle might have picked up in the past 50,000 miles before it seizes. If you're in here, clean it out. There's nothing to rust necessarily. It's all aluminum, but still. Like this. Next step that we're going to follow is to drain the coolant out of the vehicle. Uh, we did not undo the cap from under the hood, the bonnet, uh, but we're still going to open this guy up and just yeah, see what a, we can get out. It's a Jaguar. We said hood of four. Oh. We got three drops. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, let's open the top cap and then we'll follow up. <laughs> so I'm going to open the cap, so just let me know if it comes out. Ready? Yep, yeah, we're ready. Yep, yeah, there she goes. Huh. Crisis averted. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, where would it have gone? In the engine. Combusted. But the oil. Went rod. It wasn't smoking. You don't know that. I, we do. It was two in the morning. Three in the morning. To continue from earlier, we had those little metallic particles in the oil. We're gonna pull the oil filter. The dealer already did this, um, but we're gonna actually tear into this oil filter and see what the heck is going on here. And I don't know how this comes out. Nope. Okay, easy. <clears throat> it actually has, uh, it seems like locating pins. So that's interesting. So don't try to spin it like I did. But yeah, I mean, that doesn't look too hot. You can see kind of like a coppery substance there. I'm going to cut into it, see if we can see anything. I don't know. This is weird. Kind of see if there's anything like shiny coming back at you because the whole thing is shiny. Anyways, this is where the whole Blackstone report comes in, right? Your filter might catch some metal particles, but whatever we just pulled out of the oil pan, oil-wise, um, they're gonna run an analysis on it, give us feedback. Hello, you join us under the hood of a V6 uh, F-Type. What we're gonna do, <laughs> what we're gonna do is, uh, because we don't know what happened, the oil looks okay, the coolant looks okay. We, we did drain the coolant, it's actually sitting over there. I was thinking we're gonna pull this, the top off the supercharger, 
So how this works actually, your air comes in from both sides to this Y, goes in through the throttle body into the supercharger. The air then gets compressed and it's all in the V. So down low it gets compressed, the air shoots up and then it, it splits off, goes through under these two covers, you'll see there was gonna be two intercoolers, uh, air to water intercoolers. So that's what cools the charged air. And then that air shoots down into the heads and then to the valves. With the valves open, enters the piston, uh, enters the, uh, the bore, and then that's where your combustion takes place. Um, but taking this off allows us very convenient access to actually look at the valves and see if we bent any valves. So kind of leaning on uh, jump timing, uh, bent valves, and maybe a spun bearing, but we don't know. First step in the manual is to disconnect the coolant hoses here. So they're kind of tricky. Like there's uh, two clips, top and bottom. With your fingers, you can get under there. Try to press them and then pull it off. It's pretty easy. Same over here. Um, so shove a finger under, kind of apply pressure up. Same here, and then pull back with your fingers. So maybe push in a little bit. Whoop. There it goes. <laughs> yeah. Run. Yeah, clean the lens off. Yep. Get a. So what we did in that little time lapse was the coolant ports going to each bank. Uh, we have disconnected the fuel rail. Uh, there's a nut on this side. It is a 17 millimeter. It runs along the front of this plenum. And then there's another uh, nut, a 17 on that side. Uh, and then the whole unit comes out together, which is pretty nice. The valve cover breathers, so there's one on this side going to the front Y pipe. Air intake Y pipe, not the famous coolant Y pipe. Coolant Y pipes are here. Not cracked yet, but one day maybe. Um, and then there's another one back here on the back of the head and it disappears in that chunk over there. Then the bracket back here, uh, two T30s, and then actually there's two more T30s that you have to come in from like down in here and get a short extension, kind of like this guy, a T30 on a wobble joint. And then, then you can move this bracket on back and get this area all cleared up. These are T40s that hold the plenum cover on. And then in the center, there's four uh, 10 mil bolt heads. Undo those. And I think this is like the bare minimum you can do to get the, the cover off. And again, the reason we're taking the cover off is to get access to the runners to see if the valves are bent. The next step here is to figure out how I'm gonna pry this cover off. It's on there pretty good. I don't really wanna... Whoop. Okay. Well, I... So this is the tiny supercharger for the AJ126. And if you look down these runners, you can see the valves. I don't know how that side looks. Do you see in there? Yeah. You can kind of see the valves right there. Um, this is, I want to say cylinder three. I don't know which side is uh, that the cylinder count starts on, but this is the passenger rear. So let's go in the center one. Okay. So that's how it looks. Front one. Okay. I don't know if that's good or bad, but anyways. Supercharger looks interesting. There's uh, oil up here. The spaghetti noodles are a little dirty. That might be just from the oil recircling through from the valve covers through. That's where we're gonna stop today. Thank you for joining us on our first ever video um, covering a 2018 F-Type V6 uh, that decided to blow up at 50,000 miles. And Jaguar, JLR, decided to not warranty it.